before I start, can anyone give me a big smile? I'm going to take a selfie. It's good to. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you, guys. Okay. So, everyone, welcome to my talk, and thank you for coming. So, um, before I start, I need to admit that I'm a newcomer to Python. So, I'm more of a Python user rather than a Python developer. So, I'm not going to tell you guys how to write Python codes today. Basically, I will be talking about part of my research project. Um, which benefit uh, from a Python package, Scikit-Learn. I hope you will find it useful for you as well. I'm currently doing my PhD study in KDH in an SQL skeleton uh, group. So, okay, my topic is gate face recognition using machine learning algorithms with IMU sensors. I assume that most of you coming from a programming background are not familiar with what gate is. I'm giving a little background here. Basically, gate is working, and a complete gate cycle begins when one foot strikes the ground and ends when the same foot strikes the ground again. During normal working, the stance phase represents 60% uh, of the gate cycle, and the swing phase 40%. Uh, in the stance phase, uh, we can broke down it into five parts, the heel strike, the rolling response, um, the mid stance, terminal stance, and pre win. And the swing phase into initial swing, mid swing, and terminal swing. So why do we need to do gate face recognition? There are lots of people in the world suffering from gait disorder. Probably you won't notice it in your, during your no daily life, but I actually saw a lot of patients in the hospital, in KI, that they suffering from the gait disorder. Most of them are children. And through gait analysis, we can measure the center force, the step time, the sprint time, the stride length, force, weight distribution, etc. And gay, gay event detection can potentially be applied in the rehabilitation field, namely in the design of uh, personalized gay therapies according to the patient's specific needs. And also the, um, the gay face recognition is very important to develop accurate timing feedback for the exoskeleton control. Most commonly, uh, gate analysis is conducted in a motion analysis laboratory with force platforms and optical motion systems. Uh, however, those motion capture systems are non-portable, operate only in a controlled environment, and are consequently not optimal to analyze consecutive gate cycles for long-term mobility scenarios. Of course, it's very expensive. So recently, the gate recognition using inertial measurement units has become an active research field due to their small size, portability, and high processing power. The force-based systems such as the foot switches are considered the golden standard for gate detecting. So why machine learning in gate face recognition? Most of the available computational methods for gate recognition nowadays are based on a threshold-based finite state machine. Machine learning is needed for the tasks that are too complicated for humans to code directly. So instead of writing a program by hand for each specific task, we collect lots of examples that specify the correct output for a given input. A machine learning algorithm then tests this examples and produce a program that does the job. So I'm going to briefly introduce two uh, popular machine learning algorithms here. 
The first one is support vector machine. Support vector machine can solve two class problems with optimal separating hyperplane, with, which generates the maximum margins between two data sets. So in this data set, um, in this figure, you can see the black line is the hyperplane here, and the dashed line represents the maximum margins here. Another one is k-nearest neighbors. In k-nearest neighbors algorithms, an object is classified by a majority vote of its neighbors. So um, in this data set, the red dot is a new input. So now we need to classify the new input to which, which, one, which class it should be. So if k is 1, then the outcome is a plus. If k is 2, the outcome is an unknown. If k is 5, then it's a minus. For those people who are not familiar with machine learning, but interested in using it, if you don't want to build your own classifier from scratch, I highly recommend the scikit-learn package. It's a free machine learning library for Python, built on NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. And it's open source and commercially usable. So let's start with a small example. Um, we start with loading the digits data, which includes the images of digits from 0 to 9. Then we create the model. It is a, now it's like a support vector machine model. And then we train the model with the training data set. For the training data set, we use all the images except for the last image. After training the model, we can predict the new values with the last image. And here we can see the last, last image um, is classified to be the digit 8. So here comes my experiment setup. Since I'm using to attach to the thigh, the shrink, and the foot for both legs, each MU sensors can measure the acceleration, angular velocity, magnetic field intensity on three orthogonal axes and compute one quaternions for, of four elements, making it in total 78 channels of six IMUs. The foot switches were placed on the heel, the first metatarsal, the fifth metatarsal, and the hair looks. The label procedure of each gate phase were implemented by analyzing the force profile provided by the foot switches. From this figure, we can see all the data points corresponding to five gate events will be identified. And each gate cycle is separated into five gate phases, the loading response, the mid stance, terminal stance, pre swing and swing. So to evaluate the performance of the classifiers, we compare the estimated gate phases to the reference phases. So the red one is the label phases, and the green one is the green one is the is the predict, predictive phases. For subjects for subject one working at a velocity of four kilometers per hour, the overall accuracy for the support vector machine is around ninety six percent, higher than the than that of ninety. 4% of the KNN classifiers. And as in most of the cases, confusions occurs between two successive phases. This confusion can be explained by the fact that the reference phases are defined manually, which may be subject to the labeling errors, especially in the case of transitions between phases. As we increase the 
uh, working velocity of the subject, we can see um, we can see that the overall accuracy will decrease gradually. Then the next step will be integrating this algorithm to a uh, exoskeleton controlled. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, so, what's the training data like, right? Do you do the really expensive measurements on some reference people and then train the data with like the cameras and the everything and the, these measurement systems yeah, yeah. together? That's the... Or no, I only, I only did the, um, the IMU sensors yeah. measurements and we didn't do the optical ones, we didn't do the ma the markers, the so optical markers. But you said the, the, the you have a sort of right answer that you train yeah. it with. That's yeah. that's based we, on you watching the subject and just saying Exactly. We label the data by hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.